Hello friends, this video on hydrocarbons part 28 is brought to you by examfear.com. No more fear from exam. So the question is how will you convert benzene to para nitro benzene and meta nitro chloro benzene. So let's start with para nitro benzene. Let's see how it looks. This is my nit para nitro bromo benzene. So at para position I have a NO2 group here. So let me draw the NO2 group here. And this is a bromo here. Now if you see, I can have two options, either first bro add bromine to benzene and then nitro group or first nitro group and then bromine. So if, what if I first add nitro group, if I first add nitro group, then what will happen? In that case is nitro group is meta directory group, the bromine will be added at beta position. I can't, I will not be able to add bromine at para position, correct? See if I add NO2 first. In that case, the bromine I can add only at this at this position. Correct? I won't be able to add bromine at this position, so I won't be able to get this compound. So better first add bromine and then I can add nitro group. So first in this benzene I have to add bromine. So here the logic is you have to find which one to add first. So bromine I can add easily. I can take bromine and I can take AlBr3 or FeBr3. So with that I will get a bromine, bromine. Now I have got the bromine, I can use the nitration. Nitration I have to do in concentration HNO3, concentration H2SO4, this reaction mechanism we already explained. So with this we will get either ortho or para. We will draw it clearly. Then these either or either of these you'll get. And once you have this, you can separate by fractional distribution. Correct. The next is M nitrochlorobenzene. Let's see this again. So again, here I have to find the draw nitrochlorobenzene. So nitrogen at beta position. Now if I add chlorine first, I'll get ortho and para nitro. Why? Because chlorine is plus I effect. But if I add nitro first, I'll get chlorine at beta position. So in this case, I have to add nitro first. Hope you understand because nitro has a minus I effect. So it will make sure the next substitution takes place at beta position. So first, I'll do nitration. Same thing concentration nitric acid and concentration sulfuric acid. So you do the nitration. Once nitration is done, I can add chlorine using again FeCl3 or AlCl3. So I'll get in this case my chlorine at beta position only. This is my compound. Here since I got only one compound, I don't have to fraction distribution. So here the logic is if you have to add two compounds, two elements actually, just understand which one is ortho and which one is Meta directly. So based on that, you can decide which one to add first. A similar question: How will you convert benzene to para nitro toluene? So if you see para nitro toluene, this is something like this: CS3, and at para position, I have a nitro group. So here, if I add nitro group first, the CS3 group will be added at meta position because NO2 is a meta directing group. So first, I have to add CS3 because it is a ortho and para directing group. So in that case, I can get nitro at para group. So let me add, this is a benzene, first I have to add CS3, so add CS3, what I can do, I can take CS3, CL and AL, CL3, so with that I can have this toluene here, once I have this toluene, I can do the nitration very easily, concentration H2SO4 and concentrated nitric acid, so with that you'll get a two position now, because this is ortho and para directing group, so you'll get nitration NO2 at this position, and you'll also get NO2 at my para position. And now what you can do, you can do with the fractional distillation to filter out. The next is you have to go get acetophenone. So this is pretty easy actually. So this is my CO, CO3. So what I can do is to get this, to get this, what I can do is I can take this benzene 
and I can take this CH3COL and I can add this PLCL3 to make this is a better electrophile and then the electrophile attack will happen and it will form here. And this is my acetone phenol. The question says here to write all the products of ozonolysis of 1 to diethyl benzene and the, the question also asks how does the result support KQL extraction. So we talk about the 1 to diethyl benzene according to KQL it has two structures also. This one where I have let me draw the KQL structure. This is one where you have the carbon, the bond between these two carbons. The another structure possible is correct. So I put all this carbon in green now, and now we need to ozonize. What happens is we have a double bond. We do ozonize, it becomes something like this, right? Correct. So C1, C2. This is what happens. We have seen in ozonolysis. It breaks into the, the double bond breaks and you replace the double bond with a, a keto. So let's do this. I can break this bond, I can break this bond, I can break this bond. Correct. So if you if you break this bond and let me take this carbon now, let me number it actually. One, two, three, four. Five, let me take this lot carbon 1 and carbon 2. So I have carbon 1 here, then I have carbon 2 here. In carbon 2, I have a CS3 group attached, right? This is what we have, and I'll get a double, I'll get a ketone here, I'll get a ketone here. Correct, but C2 will get a ketone and C1 will get a ketone, and other I can just put hydrogens. So there will be one hydrogen here, and there won't be any hydrogen here. This is what we'll get one product. This is nothing but my 2 oxypropanol. Let's see other one. Let's now see 3 and 4. So 3 and 4, if you see, I'll get 3 and 4, carbon 3 and carbon 4. With carbon 3, I'll get a ketone again. Carbon 4, I'll get a ketone here again. And I don't have anything, so I have to add hydrogen. So this is what you will get. Correct. Now let me try with uh, carbon 5 and 6, carbon 5 and 6, carbon 5 and 6, I have to add again ketone on both sides, sorry, in carbon 3 I took, in carbon 3 I had CS3 to attach, so I could attach here CS3, the carbon 3 had CS3 to attach, so this is the product, in fact both are same actually you see right, are they, yes both are same actually, now I will take carbon 5 and carbon 6, in carbon 5 and carbon 6, there is no methyl group attached, so it will be a normal. This is glyxone. Let's see for this guy. Let's break this. And let me number it again. Carbon 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. Please note I am not using the IAPC numbering convention. With that, it should be C1. I just used some convention. I am just started with C1. So C1 and C2 I'll break now. Sorry, I'll break, I'll write the C1 and C6 now. First. C1 and C6. So C1 and C6 I'll break and both will have a ketone now. And none of the carbon C1 and C6 had any, uh, what do you call, methyl group attached. So it will be a normal. Next. Next I'll break C2 and C3. C2 and C3. So in both this case, both C2 and C3 had methyl group. Correct, and both will get a keto. The next L break is what C4 and C5 I'll get in one shot, right? Because this, these two bonds will break and we'll get C4, C5. C4, C5. So in this case, C4 and C5, none of this has methyl group, so it will be hydrogen only. So these are the output I'll get. So if you see, it has only three output actually, because this guy, the one in the squares I'm making, this guy and this guy is all same, correct? And the one in the circle I am making, circles, they are also 
same as and this is one different to that. So I get three products now actually. The one is the squares, they are called glycol. And the one, this guy, special one, CS3, CWO, CS3. This is nothing but 2, 3, buta, by Skeeter actually. And this one is, the one in the circle is my 2, oxy, propane. So these are the my products, I'll, I'll get three products actually. Right, this is one product, one circle, one square, another product. The one without any square and circle is another. So we have to arrange N benzene and hexane and ethane in decreasing order of their acidity. This is my ethane, this is my benzene, and this is my N hexane. So we have seen told that uh, yeah, the one with triple bond is maximum acidic. So my ethane will be maximum acidic. And then double bond and then single bond. So this is my acidic decreasing auto. This is maximum acidic. The terminal carbons here are acidic. So the next question is why does benzene undergo electrophilic substitution easily and nucleophilic substitution with difficulty? So again, if you see the benzene, right? This is the benzene. I have this is my pi electron cloud. So pi electron cloud is nothing but Electrons, so many electrons. Since there are so many electrons, the person who can attack will be electrophile. Correct? Because electrophile is the one which loves electron and benzene has electrons. So it will be attacked. If there's a nucleophile that comes here, nucleophile loves loves nucleus, but here you have more of electrons, you'll be repelled. The nucleophile will be repelled by benzene. Only the electrophile will be attracted because the electrophile loves electron and benzene has huge number of pi electrons, pi electron cloud. So benzene is more prone to electrophilic substitution than nucleophilic substitution. The question is how will you convert ethyne, ethene and hexane to benzene? Ethyne is pretty easy, we have seen this. You take this ethyne, three ethynes actually, and you have this red hot iron. Uh, Tube and you'll get benzene. This is we have seen this pretty easy reaction, right? For ethene, what we can do is we can first convert ethene to ethyne. So I have ethene, I have to convert into ethyne. So what I can do is I can first add bromine here, I, then I can do uh, dehydrohalogenation or dehalogenation, dehydrohalogenation actually. So bromine I have to add in the presence of CCL4, I'll get this. Br here and the more Br. And I can do now dehydrohalogenation with the KOH. So HBr, HBr2, 2 HBr will go off from here, right? And what will get is and I, I, I can do this for 3 actually. Let's start with 3, I'll get 3. And 3 again, I'll just use the red hot tube and I'll get this basin easy. Right? So here also you have to convert. Ethene to ethyne. The next is hexane. Hexane also we have seen this reaction actually. So let's suppose this is my hexane, right? This is a cyclohexane, this is a normal hexane actually. A straight one, you can draw in this fashion also, one, two, three, four, five, six, or you can draw in this fashion. So to convert this into uh, what you call cyclohexane, you can pass it to Cr2O3. So this hydrogen, this hydrogen will go up and there will be bond here, I'll get cyclohexane. Now what I can do is I can I can remove three hydrogen also. So with this I'll get benzene, and I can easily do it because this one is more stable and this one is less stable. Correct? This one is more stable. Since this is more stable, I can easily get this. I can really easily remove three hydrogen from it. Suggest the name of Lewis acid. Other than AlCl3, which can be used for ethylation of benzene, we have told so many times we can use FeCl3 also, right? I have iron or aluminium, we can use. So instead of AlCl3, we can also use FeCl3. Now we'll talk about carcin, carcinogenicity, and toxicity. 
So CAR C demogenitive is causing cancer, cancerous, the one which can cause cancer is a very deadly disease and that's why you see this logo is a cancer logo. There are so many different kinds of cancer. So this is a cancer logo and this arise has tendency to cause cancer and they are very toxic also. So you see if, if benzenes and my polybutyl hydrocarbon that has more than two benzenes, they are fused together, they are toxic. The, for example, if you see these are all toxic actually and they are found to produce cancer. See these benzenes and all right, they, they have polynuclear hydrocarbons or benzene, they have, they have more than two benzene rings, they have more than two benzene rings fused together. If you see they have here four benzene rings, here five, here five, here five, here five, here four. These are all toxic. Right? And this are generally form an incomplete combustion of organic material, tobacco, coal, etc. That's why you say don't take tobacco, don't take cigarette, don't right, don't consume cigarette. Because these in this case incomplete combustion happens and these causes these compound which can cause cancer. And they enter into human body and they cause cancer, they damage the DNA and they do hell of it. So please, this is just to tell you that if there is an incomplete combustion of polynuclear hydrocarbon, then there is a chance that the output you get is these kind of products and these kind of products can cause cancer. So one of the most common example is the tobacco. Incomplete combustion of tobacco may lead to cancer. Thank you. Visit examfear.com to watch free educational videos, try free online tests, get the best quality study materials, study from the best tutors and mentors and much more. Thanks once again.